Yeah, welcome everyone to our presentation, Regulatory Affairs. Do you also feel the same as we do? Are you also lost in this kind of regulation forest? But Sarah, how to get out of this regulation forest? With the digital path through the forest to the compliance goal. Let's have a look how to get out of the regulation forest with Siemens. I'm often out in the mountains on weekends. I, I really liked it. And uh, a few weeks ago, my partner and I made an absolutely beginner's mistake. We got lost quite simply because we overlooked the signposts. So we lost a lot of time. It got dark. You could imagine it got also cold. And um, the initial of area of being in the mountains gradually disappeared. It can be similar, uh, can be a similar story for medical companies who can no longer see the forest for the trees and the forest of regulations and um, those lose their way. So what are your risks in this story? Maybe it won't get cold but due to the ever-increasing demands in terms of administration, maintenance and fulfillment of regulatory processes, the way out of the forest can take a long time. And this takes up unnecessary resources, time get lost and errors occur. In common, the healthcare industry is one of the most innovative industries that produce innovative products and technologies. The products are becoming more and more innovative, but also more complex. The growing complexity means that the security and performance requirements for the products are also increasing. Regulatory authorities such as the FDA or here in Europe, the MDR have to keep up here. And now some facts. 69% of companies expect more regulation to be announced. And one third of these companies spend at least one day a week finding and analyzing regulatory changes. This can be observed with the changeover from the Medical Device Directive, the MDD, to the Medical Device Regulation, MDR. The content here of the MDR has increased ninefold compared to the MDD. You see here the numbers of pages. The number of pages have been increased from 69 to 566. 566, a lot of pages. And the number of articles have been increased too, from five up to 123 articles. And of course, last but not least, also the attachment have also increased. So what does it mean for the CE conformity assessment? The increased scope of content has a very unpleasant side effect. You uh, can imagine that at the same time, the documentation effort increases, starting with the user needs up to the audit and furthermore with the monitoring of the medical product on the market. As part of the conformity assessment procedure, the intended purpose is the basic requirement for deciding whether a product is actually a medical device and which classification it is subject to. Depending on the assignment to a class, the corresponding regulatory requirements for the medical device must be considered and fulfilled. The design of the required quality management system also depends on this. After the first steps of the conformity assessment, it then goes into the centerpiece, the development and documentation of the medical device. This is where the essential documentation comes is in a, a part of the design history file and the design master record. So both documents will then go into the submission and registration. 
with the MDR, the complete post-market surveillance area is now also integrated into the process. The monitoring of the medical product on the market is also subject to the obligation to provide evidence. So therefore, documentation must also be comprehensible and traceable. Many documents are required for the final registration, which are stored at the user level in different system and folder structures. So the challenge here is to find out which of the many documents from the user level is really the final status and to compile them in the form of the DHF and DMR. Here, the feedback from our customer leads to the assumption that 80% of the working time is only invested in searching, checking, so also analyzing and collating the documents to the final documentation. So similar challenges then arise during auditing for the medical device. As indicated at the beginning of the story, we would certainly not have gotten lost if we had paid attention to the signage. The digitization of the CE conformity assessment is the digital signage and process support in the forest of regulations. So with Siemens through the forest regulation and how this digital path leads through and out the forest of regulations, so to the top of the mountain, that's what my colleague Susan is now showing. Yeah, thank you, Sarah. And you address a very important point, the regulation forest. And with the change from MDD to MDR, a large number of medical device manufacturers find themselves in this kind of forest of regulations. And they can no longer see the forest for all these kind of trees. This is at least our experience from daily discussions. But how we can get out of this kind of forest with the help of a digital path? And let's stay with the example of the design history file. How do you keep track from a regulatory affairs perspective, which documents are in which status and so on, and what kind of documents you will need? Let's imagine we have a digital whiteboard that shows us which documents we all need and in which status they are. But where do we get these kind of documents from? From the user level. And the users are more interested in whether they work according to, for example, a classic V model or maybe in an agile way. Either way, the documents that needs to be created are always the same, starting with the intended purpose, creating then the user needs for this medical device, creating then design the design input with all the requirements, the design output with the risks and also the technical drawings, and creating then finally design verification documentation with all the test cases to finally have the final reporting information. But from a regulatory affairs point of view, do you really want to wait until the whole process is done or would you rather get an information and a check of already approved documents on your digital whiteboard? And how and where do you also handle today, today related topics such as, for example, project management, change management, configuration management, and how do you ensure also that you work in an audit proof manner? Let's imagine we're working in a digital medical device solution, and this solution is based on three core pillars. The first core pillar is the topic of traceability. How do you ensure this kind of traceability today? Manually, by jumping from one word file to another word file and searching for the right IDs? Let's imagine you have an integrated linking system where you can step by step build the entire traceable chain. First core pillar, traceability. The second core pillar is the topic of collaboration. Do you still need to wait for all your colleagues that they have released a document and they are out of the document and right now afterwards you can work in this document. In the digital medical device solution, you can work with the role concept. And depending on the role, there are different authorizations and accesses. 
And these roles allow you to work simultaneously and also collaboratively in your team in the same document if you have the authorization to do so. And if you have the authorization, you are also allowed to, for example, the release the new document. The second core pillar, collaboration. And the last core pillar is the topic of reuse. A change request comes in on your product. You need to create a new version. How do you do this today? A copy of the document version 1.0, and you're reusing this document and rename it just to, um, to version 2.0. By working in the medical device solution, you can reuse the document itself from the version 1.0 and just put on a next version 2.0 on top of the same document. Like this, you only change the content that needs to be changed. And these three core pillars are the main parts for this for to get out of this regulation forest. Traceability, collaboration and reuse. So, Sarah, what do you think? How does that sound for you for the next walking tour? That sounds really good, Susan, for now. Um, but what I'm still not clear on is where exactly the difference is now from the addit uh, additional approach. Yeah, good point, Sarah. So, in the medical device solution, we say goodbye to static document thinking. Instead, we're moving towards an object oriented thinking and working. We nevertheless still continue to work in documents, but all of our information, like the requirements, the risks, and so on, are right now dynamic elements instead of these kind of paragraphs. So we are extracting these kind of paragraphs into objects in the same document. And these elements can be any kind of information, like the intended purpose, the user needs, the requirements, the risk, the tests, and so on and so on. And the big advantage of working with these information elements is that we can not only create dependencies between two documents, instead, we can create dependencies in between documents and saying in this document we have a requirement, this requirement will be fulfilled by one test case out of this document. So you can create step by step the full traceable, traceable chain based on these kind of information elements. And that saves us a lot of time, right? And we work according also to the rules. And of course, this also works with every kind of other information, such as, for example, standards and regulation. We link, for example, the regulations with the um, intended purpose to show which regulations must be taken into account on one hand. And on the other hand, we link also these regulations to specifications to show um, by which specification a regulatory is fulfilled. Are you still with me, Sarah, and does this make sense to you? Of course, I'm still with you, Susan, and um, this makes sense for me. But um, do you have a concrete example? Yes, sure. So therefore, let's right now jump into the medical device solution itself. On the right side of the dashboard, we see our conformity assessment procedure as a process itself. This process, process can also be, for example, supplemented by stage gates like this. We can make sure that all necessary steps are done before we jump into the next step. And on the left side of the navigation panel, we do see, first of all, also the procedure. And on the button, we do see all of our information elements, such as the intended purpose, the product itself, the standards and the user needs. That means all the information we, we need for our full process, we are working with these kind of information elements. And an object on information element is, for example, also the intended purpose. And the, so the purpose of our medical device. So let's imagine for today, we are developing a new um, diabetic app on top of an already existing insulin pump, which is already on the market. Depending on the classification and type of medical device, there are different regulations to consider, right? But how do you keep track of them today? With the help of libraries of regulations and standards. And in the medical device solution, you link these kind of standards out of the library to your intended purpose in order to maintain precisely this kind of overview. However, these kind of standards and regulations are continuously updated. 
there's a new version of, for example, the 62304 coming out. How do you know today which products, on which products this will be have an impact on? By manual searching? No. By referencing individual regulations in the respective products, you can see via one click that a change of the 62304 has an impact on the product documentation of the insulin pump and our diabetic. Sarah, is the forest clearing up a little bit at least? Yes, I see a light digital path through the forest. And um, that brings me up to next questions. Um, sorry, Susan, for that. But um, how can I see now that all the regulations have been met? Great question. So let's stick with the example of the 62304. The individual paragraphs in the document usually are now individual objects, these kind of information objects. And these objects right now? can be linked to any kind of pieces of information to other documents. So for example, into the development process, so into the document of, um, of all the requirements. By this linkage, we show whether regulations are already fulfilled, and if so, by which um, requirements they are fulfilled. And Sarah, now we can also use this kind of principle for every single digital path out of the regulation forest. So also for the path in the development, the so-called design control process to create all documents for the design history file. So for example, the path of the user needs. Also here we're working in documents. We do see we have just one document in which we have several versions of the document. And what we also do see is that we're here working with dedicated information objects for the user needs in the document itself. And based on these single elements and objects, we get then an overview in which status our user needs are currently are and which of them are already, for example, implemented. Or we do get an overview which of our user needs are already covered by specific requirement specifications. And these kind of principle we are not only using for, for example, the requirements area. Instead, we can also use this for the risk management. So also in the risk management here, we're working with information elements. These can be the hazard, the hazard situation, the harm and so on. And in the risk management, we also can bring these kind of objects into a document or also into your dedicated risk tables. So for example, into an FMEA table or into a risk assessment table to make sure that you have the right information in the right table with all um, these kind of deeper details. And based on this principle, we also can integrate a full test management um, in the development process. Also here, we do see that we are working first of all in documents. In the documents, we are creating the dedicated test cases with all the right test steps we have to test for our diabetic app. And based on these test cases, we are allocating them then into a test run to execute this test run into a manually or automatically way. And based on this, we're getting then information who has executed this test run and did we have any kind of failed test cases? And if so, the system will create for us automatically a defect. But what kind of impact has this kind of failed test case and defect, not only to the requirements, instead to the full le level? Based on the core pillar of traceability, we also see that the failed test case has an impact on the requirements, but might have also an impact on user need or on the intended purpose itself. And this kind of principle can be also from a regulatory affairs perspective um, used for, for example, the document overview to get an uh, information. Okay, which of my documents are in which status, who has signed these documents and in which version they are. Like this from every single perspective, user perspective or also from a regulatory affairs perspective, you get an overview in which in which status they are and you can use these kind of core pillars of traceability, collaboration and reuse. And Sarah, this means that we also have a digital path out of the regulation forest in the area of the full design control process. And this digital path is also completely traceable. So this means we can't lose ourselves 
in this regulation for us and we will find our way back out um, from the mountain. So Sarah, what do you think? That's really wonderful. But um, now that you have mentioned the topic of design control in addition to the regulations, I have a few more questions now. And one of uh, my questions is, what about submission and registration management? Yeah, how, how do you handle this kind of submission management today? Classically, we create a zip file, right, with all the necessary information and documents. But do you want to collect all your single documents and information manually from a regulatory affairs perspective? From my point of view, no. Or would you prefer to collect them in one final document, so the DHA file document, and then have via one click a zip file created out of this kind of document? And in this zip file, you have already all the dedicated information structured based on the chapters you have created in your document. Like this, you can easily have all the right information in, a, in the right version in one document and create just by one click this kind of structured zip file with for the submission and registration. Yeah, and once submitted, we then want to get an overview in which status our submissions are, right? So and here we first of all see that we do have uh, which of our submissions are currently in which status. We do, so, uh, we do see our diabetic app is already submitted. We do have already a registration number and we do um, get further information about our submission. And for example, we also see what kind of missing information we do have. We can integrate specific tasks and see also some due dates for our submission in a calendar overview. That's a nice overview, Susan, with all relevant information in it. And um, so my question is now, could we use this documentation also for auditing? Yes, Sarah. And how do you handle this today? You can use in the medical device solution predefined checklists to check all the necessary things and use them to create, first of all, an initial internal audit report. And this internal audit report is the basis then for the audit with the notified bodies. And there you can start by this kind of first internal audit report and say, OK, these kind of information were our findings from our internal audit report. Here we have already created some dedicated task, what we have to do against these kind of findings and address them. And they're already notified bodies. They are really already doing these kind of audit in such a medical device solution because almost 80% of the time in an audit is spent by searching for information. 80%. Like this, based on the medical device solution, you not only save time, instead you also save money. Okay, so that is really a lot of time wasted and also money. And um, yeah, I mentioned it before in uh, my overview of the conformity assessment processes that um, yeah, the whole post-market surveillance area is now integrated into the conformity processes. So what about the post-market surveillance um, yeah, in, in detail? Yeah, that's our last step in the full um, process. So classically, we work um, together with a second digital path. So such as, for example, an ERP system in which these kind of incidents will be created, right? And these kind of incidents will be then linked back into the digital, into the medical device and um, platform to reuse them and to get an overview which of my products are currently on the market and how many incidents we do have currently based on our products. And based on this, we can also process the actions of, for example, the claims. So which of our, our claims do have a high priority, which of them are already covered by some, some task, what we have to do, and so on, and so on. So these kind of things can also be integrated in this full procedure. And Sarah, we are coming to an end, and I have the feeling, or I think at least, um, that I do see the end of the forest and I think I see also the peak of the mountain. Am I wrong or do, do you see it too? No, Susan, um, you are right and you are not mistaken. I see it too. 
I think we made it and uh, we reached the top of the mountain. But Susan, how did we find our way out? Yeah, on this digital path and the medical device solution based on the three core pillars of um, collaboration, traceability and reuse. So with these three core pillars, traceability, collaboration and reuse will make complexity manageable and ensure your product is developed according to the regulations. So we also get there faster with the digital um, signposting and that means faster market access also for your products. That's wonderful or not. So get out of the regulation forest with Siemens. Yeah, sorry, just name it. Get out of the regulation forest with Siemens. And if you are interested in further details, how our direction might look like in detail, then we're looking forward to get in touch with you afterwards. Thank you. Thank you.